Thank you so much for joining us again. Um, I think it's week five, actually. And I'm thrilled to be joined by the fantastic and dynamic Rashid Rana. Now, Rashid is widely considered to be one of the leading artists of his generation in South Asia and especially in Pakistan. He emerged as a maker of an entirely new, different kind of art at the beginning of the 21st century. He mediates roles between an artist, an academic, a curator, and there's one common thread that joins his work, and I'm really excited to hear more about that later, um, of an unfixed and non-prescriptive view of geography and identity. And I think that's quite important, particularly in today's day and age. Rashid is notable for his ideas, his imagery, and his pictorial strategies, and his body of work is vast and growing constantly. It includes paintings, photo mosaics, photo sculptures, and video installations. Rashid lives and works in Lahore, and he trained as a painter at NCA, and then he did his MFA at Mass Art in Boston. He is a founding faculty member and currently the dean at um, a fantastic university in Lahore and its art program called the Mariam, uh, Mariam Daud School of Visual Arts and Design at BNU, which is very exciting. Rashid's work is in very important collections world over and a couple of notable ones are the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, the British Museum in London and the Fukuoka Museum of Art in Japan. Um, he received the prestigious Game Changer Asian Artist Award in 2016, and he was awarded International Artist of the Year by SAVAC Canada in 2003. So this is really exciting to have him here today. Rashid, how are you doing? I'm very well, except I've got a, a kind of a sty uh, on my eye. So it's That's okay, sunglasses it's not... suit you. <laughs> it's not it a fashion statement, I have to say. That's but okay. uh, uh, yeah. I hope uh, it's working. Fine. Rashid, we were talking a little bit about your role. Um, you see your practice as a curator, an academic, an ideas person, a thinking person, and also as a curator. And I thought it might be interesting to talk about the overarching philosophy that you said joins this body of work, um, all of the different facets that you sort of take over. So would you like to speak about that a little bit? Uh, very, uh, I have to say, uh, heavy duty labels. Uh, mm -hmm. I would, I would rather say that uh, my practice uh, expands into art making, exhibition making, uh, and curriculum making. So sort of lessens the burden. Curator is a heavy duty word. I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I haven't curated that many shows. But that said, I believe, um, the boundaries are really blurring, uh, you know, uh, looking at this whole explosion of information and imagery uh, on internet in the last few years and, you know, social media and, 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 and then if you just look at Instagram, the kind of pages people have curated with so many images, of course, it's not, people can argue that it's not high art, um, but there's, uh, there's a different, I, I, I'm, I'm enjoying this whole uh, process and then uh, in the sense that uh, I believe that viewer is the new artist now, and as if everybody's a curator, or so it's, these boundaries are it. sounding meaningless to me. But and they, but to be honest with you, to answer your question specifically, these boundaries have been uh, not so important for me from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I was trained as a painter, and I never conformed to the idea that I'm a painter and I must make paintings using paint and canvas. And I sort of remain open to the idea of possibilities. And, 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 and whatever my practice you're familiar with, it unfolded that way. So mm -hmm. um, even in the recent times, we, we can perhaps talk about it later uh, on uh, towards the end or whenever you want um, in more depth, perhaps uh, about the whole, the very idea of art. I mean, it's, uh, I, I, I want to feel, you know, less burdened by thinking of, an, thinking of myself as an individual who has some ideas and would like to express through some object and image making, uh, through uh, engaging in sharing that knowledge, the two-way exchange, call it teaching, or putting things together when it comes to involving other minds so that your view is rather vast. So you know, when you work mm -hmm. with other minds, you call it curatorial practice or something else. So yeah, I mean, I like to have my freedom and a bigger canvas and a wider canvas. 
No, that makes complete sense. And I have to say, I think that your mythology and even the work that you've done over the years has been so very forward thinking. I mean, for example, I know that you've already adapted to this new normal. Your legendary parties have converted into Zoom birthday parties, haven't they? <laughs> See, the, the, I think your comment about legendary party party <laughs> wasn't all that correct. So this is this is nature getting its. Uh, well, no, I mean one believes in uh, enjoying uh, good times with your friends. Uh, no, uh, there has to be color in life, uh, and 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 and, and then we are social, uh, you know, creatures anyway. But I don't uh, acknowledge the claim of legendary parties <laughs> but yes i mean uh, when this entire period tr these trouble times indeed i mean it's it's very sad uh, the loss of lives all over the world um but then uh, uh, you know you want to celebrate life with and you want to engage with your loved ones so i found this as an as a, as a reason to 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 uh, organize few activities and events that you're referring to in the last month and a half uh, that I have been guilty of. Uh, yes, no, I mean, I think it's so important. And also, what I find really interesting is you were far ahead of this curve anyway. I mean, for example, you and Shilpa Gupta and um, the Gujral Foundation had put together this fantastic pavilion at Venice in 2015 <clears throat> at the Venice Biennale. And I remember your work over there was almost like a Zoom meeting, if you think about it now. You well, had I mean, a work yes, that was um, in Lahore and in Venice. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I know, but the drive wasn't really the idea of virtuality or mm -hmm. the use of technology. I mean, technology has never been important to me in that sense. I mean, I do not like to be a person who uh, uses technology for the sake of using technology. I, I just, uh, my ideas lead the way and, and then uh, medium and format and technology or if anything else follows. So uh, as far as this specific project you're referring to, the Venice Biennale project, what I'll tell you what I really had on my mind. Um, I was going to be part of this you know, fantastic initiative by Feroz Gujral uh, to put together a joint India-Pakistan pavilion that I was part of along with uh, Shilpa Gupta. So it was very exciting to be uh, at that platform because people from all over the world, all the you know, uh, you know, you know, different kind of individuals and professionals from the art world and all kind of audience, uh, they gather there for, you know, for this, you know, extended period of time. So I was, I was at the same time, you know, it has been uh, cooking, this has been on my mind for, for some time at that point, that, you know, myself and many of my other uh, peers uh, from contemporary Pakistani art, they get the opportunity to exhibit their work elsewhere. And we do not get to, you know, uh, show our work in our own country uh, because of the limitations, uh, you know, that the certain kind of work that one has produced, it, it's, it's, it's so, so the logistics and, you know, opportunities are, aren't there that way. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so I thought, I mean, I, I must bring Pakistani Lahori audience into this project somehow. That was really the beginning point, which led to creating, uh, uh, it wasn't so much about the live streaming, the, the, I think that perhaps the, what worked for in the case of that particular work is the idea of replicating the room. So the viewers mm -hmm. uh, were seeing themselves in a mirror-like duplication situation where they, it's like seeing yourself in the mirror one fine morning and not mm -hmm. finding yourself there and finding somebody else there. That's the yeah. kind of, it's, it's, it's slightly different than uh, just live streaming or, exactly. or, 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 or you know, Skyping. And so in its simplicity, uh, the idea worked for, from my point of view, it worked because um, there was a total absence of object in that sense. The viewers mm. themselves become the work. The viewers become the artwork. How was that work received in Lahore? People must have been so excited to be a part of the larger installation. Were you surprised? I think by always, how it I mean, out? my experience has been that uh, whenever I got the opportunity uh, to exhibit in Lahore uh, and even Karachi at Mohatta Palace Museum, uh, I enjoy people who come to uh, see artworks on walk in basis, uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to the strictly those 20 people from the art world who we know. Uh, mm -hmm. So, and I'm, I, I, with all due respect, I have seen that our friends from the art world have a tendency. Include, include, I'll include myself in it. We have this lens that we use to, you know, view art where we very yeah. easily put things into categories. 
and and the and the contemporary thematic concerns that we are aware of and we have labels for those and i enjoy uh, particularly when audience from um, outside their circles of art strict circles of art when they engage with the works i i find it more uh, rewarding for me because their their engagement is is minus those uh you know uh, lens of information yeah it's more pure in a way it's more, perhaps more naive as well but also more real i find that yep. as well speaking of lohatta palace can you tell me a little bit about that exhibition i know that it was quite a major retrospective with many of your works from your visual arts practice and i think this will be a great way of talking about your visual arts practice now we can move into that but well, i wanted was, uh... to hear a little bit about how it was put together perhaps some of your prize pieces and we should talk a little bit about the philosophy behind those works i would say the um the um genesis of that work perhaps goes back many years when i didn't even know i'll be able to ever exhibit at mohata palace museum this is the time when i was coming back from boston after my mm -hmm. graduate program post nc went to boston and then from there when i was coming back uh it was it was really the transition uh, time uh for the next few years i did not produce much work mm -hmm. um and uh, i w the question that remained on my mind uh is whether uh if you produce just like my mentor zahur lakhlak uh, he he still to date remains painter's painter and i'm i'm pretty sure that his work will be recognized and understood uh much more in the times to come um but it kind of bothered me that in his work didn't have wider audience so i thought that perhaps it's to do with the the way you the strategies you use for making your art so i was naturally inclined to make uh, at that point to make work uh, which uh, which ex can access wider audience so that gradually led to the interest in the popular and the familiar and the collection of you know um, uh, found imagery uh and and then then the recognition of this whole idea that we li truly live in the world of images i mean it's an mm -hmm. understatement really uh so the so the the drive basically was to be able to make work which the audience wider audience especially in pakistan uh, uh be able to engage at the same time if it has any deeper content it can unfold late you know slow gradually uh, so i had to look for deliberately i had to look for uh visual strategies which uh, are not making people scared of art so for instance mm -hmm. i mean i using you know uh, found imagery and use of uh, digital imagery something that part of our lives now you know often people even to date uh, some people are very scared of uh, seeing abstract paintings done with paint and all so i just thought that it's a very potent loaded material medium that that co it comes with and then uh, and then i i use strategies like mirror images you know a work of mine called ten differences where viewer has to find the differences in a playful way though dealing with a, a very dis disturbing subject matter so all of this you know this 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 uh, germination of ideas started way back in 95 to year 2000 resulted mm -hmm. in a show but then uh, the desire to be able to have a platform where i could where this work is actually truly accessible to that audience for which i had in, uh, had imagined in my mind truly happened uh, thanks to hamid harun uh in 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 2014 when i exhibited at the mohata palace museum and 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 and, and again i'm grateful to him for uh, um for allowing for for using the entire space not just one mm -hmm. floor the entire floor perhaps uh, you know largest show ever to help by a single artist so wow. so that was great uh, uh, opportunity for me uh, for a one year period for uh, audience from walk in basis kids from schools to be able to go there and engage with the work and for myself as well at that point in my career to step back and see all the works of fresh in one place and 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 and, and so i think about 70 works from 20 years or so or less uh were uh, brought together and then that show was curated by uh, uh, uh professor nazir shataulla and hamid harun jointly how wonderful and i love how you were talking about how you make works with the public in mind i think that's so important and a lot of your work very much is about the engagement <clears throat> so even the i remember you talking about how you didn't want 
it, it is not necessary that just because you are from Pakistan, your work look, should look like a certain way and you like subverting that. I'm sure that the public who viewed this work feels exactly the same way. Because again, like yourself, they've grown up in this environment with the same sort of images around them, with the same um, feelings of being larger than just Pakistani, for example, being a citizen of the world in the age of the internet and in the age of books and novels and films, our knowledge is so much larger than just what we see around us. And I know a lot of your work is also dealing with that premise. Yes, um, um, that, I mean, uh, if there's anything um, conceptually that connects my entire practice, uh, whether artistic practice or any kind of practice that I've been engaged in uh, broadly, uh, creative practice, whether teaching or exhibition making. Uh, perhaps this is the, the link which connects uh, all my works. Uh, and I wish I could be born in today's time when I feel, I, I believe, I, and I hope that the current generation is less burdened uh, with this, you know, weight of uh, tradition uh, mm -hmm. and, 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 and identity. So in with my generation, either you indulge in it or, or, or somebody like me will come conceptually oppose it. Opposing is not all that fun either because more you resist something, you kind of harden those boundaries and, and, and you give that idea more importance. And then I think there is no escape for me, as, I think, in that sense. No matter how uh, subversively I'm, I have dealt and I would deal with those ideas in my practice. So the, critic, the critical engagement with the notion of identity will become or has become my identity in that sense. So yes, I mean, I, it, this is a question which has bothered me always as to why uh, as someone being born or living in Pakistan, a third world country, which was colonized in the past, you have to make work uh, which, which, which has to resemble your past is something mm -hmm. that always uh, bothered me and I dealt with it in my own way in my art practice. Um, not, not, not that I do not enjoy creations be, being pro that was produced, that were produced, uh, you know, in, in in my immediate surroundings in this region, uh, some you know before me. Of course. Uh, that's that 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 would be misleading to understand. No, 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 uh, so I, I enjoy, I enjoy. For instance, if we be talking about uh, what is now called as um, traditional miniature painting, wasn't called that back then. Uh, yeah. So those works were like fantastic. I mean, many of those works, I love those and enjoy those. But I'm just saying that. Uh, you know, these easy labels and especially for the world outside uh, to view, view uh, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, one from that lens where you're expected to, uh, you know, find refuge in the uh, stylistic con convention of the past is something I had a problem with. I just wanted a wider, bigger canvas for myself and the generations to come. So I luckily the, ta the, the opportunity to, uh, to do something uh, with the, the uh, Beacon House National University project was very timely. It really, actually really helped me to take a macro view of things and it actually helped my practice also to put together, uh, to play a part in developing uh, the curriculum and, and its vision, uh, which basically rested on the idea that the curriculum has to cut across uh, cultural and, and political boundaries, you know, and, and, and geographical boundaries. Uh, and, and, and just the way uh, somebody, an individual from the developed world has all the freedom in the world to do whatever they want to do and it's fine. fine. Uh, and they're not expected to make work. For instance, if you're born in Amsterdam, you're not expected to make work which resembles work of Rembrandt or which resembles yeah. works of Van Gogh. Uh, so you have a complete license to be innovative and whatever you want to do, uh, 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 as opposed to if, you, uh, if, you, if, you, if you're born elsewhere. So that has been definitely on my mind and still remains to some extent. And, and still, I think uh, one selling one's otherness you know, uh, is something which is still out there. Uh, and, 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 and then still one can see that, I mean, there is still a tendency, though things have changed a lot since 9-11. Uh, there's been uh, lots of uh, binales and trinales have emerged and, and, and there's more space. Uh, the marginalized space has, in, you know, sort of widened for artists from the global south. Uh, but still, I think oftentimes there's certain kind of expectation which, which remains there. 
Uh, but anyway, I think it's changing. No, of course. I, I, just to highlight this, um, the way that you do this a little bit to people who may not be entirely familiar with your work, I think that the the carpet series that you've done is a pretty good example. Would you agree? Where essentially you've taken photograph. I mean, essentially what you see looks like a photograph of a beautiful Persian carpet very intricate, very beautifully created. But what Rashid has done is take photographs from slaughterhouses in Lahore, I believe. And he's used those tiny boxes to create, um, not boxes, but tiny photographs to create a big graphic image of a, car of a Persian carpet. Yes, I mean, uh, this, is, uh, this is partially to do with that, what we were mm. just discussing, uh, how one is viewed. Yes, absolutely. They were, exactly. I mean, in recent times, we've also seen the narrow lens uh, of the uh, new security news, I mean, post 9-11, how the uh, only the news to do with this, uh, you know, terrorism, uh, and then not that one is not acknowledging that the, the violent streak that existed over here, it's there. Uh, but I mean, it's often representations are very narrow of uh, something that we see from distance. Uh, so uh, Oriental rug, historically, uh, as something re representing the region, and, and the violence in the times that I was referring to. So I thought, you know, um, uh, as part of that series I was engaged in at that point, uh, bringing these extremes together will do the job. I wouldn't have to do anything. For one, I st had stopped seeking original, absolute originality in my work. This is a true, uh, you know, uh, uh, liberation, uh, point of liberation in my practice and my thinking, where I told myself, I don't have to be original. Uh, absolute original is something I don't have to seek. So, so, so seeing all these images and, 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 and representations out there and, and being somebody who can you know, rearrange these images and, and bring them together in such a way that they uh, effectively uh, challenge the stereotypes that have existed or the, at least soften these binaries or the uh, you know, um, uh, presume uh, absolutes that existed or uh, you know, many there. I've, I've also noticed, and around that time, what was on my mind, that people, even amongst the artists who are supposed to be with, have a, a very, very uh, liberal approach to life and, and and to their worldview, we tend to believe in one philosophy, one worldview, one uh, idea, one ideology, and just present it as a series of works, all look alike, and 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 and. and so I, I and then and, and even uh, 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 with the contradictions that exist within ourselves, all of our else, uh, of course, we, there's no one reality, the multiple reality that we all live. So I thought I became interested in, in, in acknowledging and perceiving both external and internal uh, contradictions and, and then bring them, make them coexist uh, in a very polarized kind of an image so that the, mm. the narrative actually lies between, within the very, ex the two extremes. Uh, and then in that whole process, the, 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 these absolute, uh, presumed absolutes that I mentioned about, they start looking absur absurd because of that of course, particular uh, juxtaposition and an overlapping of uh, certain imagery, which we, we see very distinctively otherwise. And then, of course, it comes on to the viewer to also use their own mind a little bit as they're looking at it and completely understand. Absolutely. About. Absolutely. This you know, also, I mean, I mean as, as I was mentioning earlier, the informed viewer from the art world will only see, okay, the macro image is this and micro is this, or this work is about gender, this work is about colonialism, and etc. Whereas I think the people who are not uh, strictly from the art circles, they actually enjoy those hundreds and thousands of images. They all have, they, which have different things to offer. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, and I, I just thought that even at that point, there was a risk when I was working on the photo mosaic series, um, uh, uh, how many, well, starting 2002, coming up all the way till 2012. Uh, so for 10 years, when I was engaged with, with, this, uh, with, with this device, uh, conceptual and formal device of micro and macro image, you know, large photo mosaics, I, I, they, I knew that there's a risk that the, the strategy, the visual strategy that I had adopted is, has a risk of becoming a one-liner, you know? So, mm. they, so, so, but I thought it's a risk worth taking. I mean, I, if, if, if the work will have any life uh, beyond that simple relationship, or if it has any deeper content, it can unfold, it will happen. I don't have to literally force those layers of meanings in such a way that the work becomes convoluted and, and mm. an inaccessible 
uh, by the wider audience. For me, that engagement was very, was very important in that period of time. That makes sense. I also wanted to quickly highlight the work that you did recently, very briefly, of course, because then I think we should move on for time's sake. But the work that you did for the Karachi Biennale, which again, using images, um, you sort of create what in some ways looks like a beautiful ocean, but in reality is a burning rubbish dump. And I found that image so powerful of you standing on top of a mountain of what turns out to be rubbish, watching the smoke rising from this burning rubbish heap. And I feel that again, like the, what I pointed out earlier, I feel that a lot of your work, perhaps without you even realizing it, is extremely foretelling of future times in a sense, because that work was what, earlier this year, earlier last year, and the world is completely changed because of our lack of environmental awareness, perhaps. Environmental, no doubt, is the uh, one of the you know major um, issues of our times. Uh, but uh, uh, that is not uh, the number one or the only concern that I have in that of course. Um, mm -hmm. I have to say that uh, those who uh, do engage with my work, they they may notice that I I keep on referring to my earlier works, or uh, in terms of ideas and my own experiences, I keep on referring to things that I have enjoyed as a student back in the NCA times. All those image and paintings that s stayed in my mind, even if I'm I developed a critical understanding of those works, and 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 and, and, and I got to know the context in which they were produced, and I'm. So, so if that love wasn't there for, for some other reason, but the love that the first love that I had with those images, uh, you know, for purely intuitive reasons, the, the images have always remained with me. And I, one way or the other, I go back to them and recreate or create some work out of those. And the other thing I was mentioning, for instance, I mean, these grid painting series from early 90s, then I mm -hmm. revisit that idea in, in, in through pixelation and then, then revisit some of those ideas imagery later on. Um, yeah, so, 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 so those who are familiar with offshore account series in which I worked with the imagery of na images from landfill site. So I wanted to, I just thought I wasn't able to do justice to that idea. There's so much to see in that. So, so, so I was in Karachi and I was actually, this was my plan C. Uh, so I can, mm -hmm. I can share with you. Uh, I was working on a number of ideas for work I had to do for Karachi Benale. And, yeah. and, and, and those work were in progress. Uh, um, if Mazamil is online, he would know because he helped me uh, a lot in, 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 in carrying out uh, many of the things, logistics around those, that pro entire process. People who work around me, work with me, I, they can easily go crazy because the way mm -hmm. I keep all these options open. So this was our plan C and it really uh, accidentally, this work happened when uh, in order to do a survey, See, the work may appear to be, these. my works may appear to be very simple, as if I decided mm -hmm. one fine day, okay, this is going to be the image, this is going to be the strategy. But this, the process of making uh, those works and arriving to those ideas very organic and very fluid. So I was just having those images collected and I had sent some guys for recce to bring me some videos and images back. And I just get a sense that I must visit this, uh, this place. So I was suggested that since I'm visiting there, might as well take a team of... Um, videographers and other people, you never know what happens there. So when we went there, yeah, that's exactly what happened because uh, the, the, it, it, the, what I saw, you know, series of mountains of, you know, garbage as far as the eye can see. There's a place called Kachra Mandi, 20 kilometers mm. outside Karachi, where majority of the Karachi Kachra is dumped there. It's a major, major landfill site. It is some site, I have to say. And 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 and, and so many uh, plastic bags and and, and uh, garbage is uh, on uh, they put in fire so there's a lot of smoke it created a scenery which resembled and and, and reminded me of frederick casper david frederick's painting the sea mm -hmm. uh, the wanderer uh, watching the sea of fog so i just that's, thought that's that true. i had this impulse that i must become that wanderer in that very moment uh, didn't worry. At, at later on, I had I freaked out that I smoked so much of 
<laughs> lethal gases <laughs> stood there for an hour yeah. and arusa was there and then the whole team was there and they uh, i just so you poisoned stood. all of them i'm a very anxious person i cannot stand still anywhere i stood still for one hour uh, yeah. non stop and and then didn't even worry about that uh, in that moment with that impulse so yeah this work just came about uh, uh, you know as 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 part of that uh, this process i found it a very very powerful piece and i even i saw it very very briefly as you remember but i also wanted to talk a little bit rashid you were speaking about it earlier about the work you've done with bnu because i do think that artists make fantastic educators and especially you with your vision your long sort of forward thinking ideals i really would love to hear about what you brought to be and you what your vision is for the university particularly the art school of course um as dean that must be quite a lot to take on well uh, i mean uh, the the history goes back to uh, 2002 uh when i was uh, asked by uh, professor navid shahzad to come and uh, put together some curriculum for the feasibility report and i was still mm. working at a pfd teaching there and teaching at nca and i just i so i used to go there without any contract without any um uh, you know professional formal uh, you know um, engagement i had this space to myself empty room and empty papers and i just i didn't have no clue that this thing they will actually will materialize but i i but i enjoyed putting those ideas down on paper uh, even if it, it was going nothing was going to happen to it it just you know brought a lot of clarity to my mind and then uh, it was great to be able to bring people together from uh, uh, from other places and then have a very different kind of a group dynamics uh, people like uh, uma mulji malcolm hutchson bani abidi they came and later on mrs hashmi joined in as the dean and then but the Uh, the group that you know came together uh, was very much like minded and in the initial ideas that i had put together uh, were discussed and then with with fine tuning we took the things forward and although some of our uh, you know uh, uh, friends uh, uh, you know from the initial times have left but some are still there kiran khan is still there and then other people wonderful people have joined in so we've been very fortunate to have a very uh, uh, you know uh, amazing team of um, uh, uh, minds Uh, working there, so um, it's been a great experience. Uh, last five six years, it has taken a lot of toll uh, toll on me, uh, in terms of uh, you know the time that um, I could give more to my artist so called artistic mm-hmm. practice. But since I don't have too many the hard boundaries between what you know um, how you define your profession, uh, so I I think it's uh, wherever you get the opportunity or means. to uh, to to manifest your ideas uh that's fine i mean uh, i understand that with art comes a lot of glamour and it's more rewarding in many ways and i've experienced that uh but i think uh, uh i i i think it's uh, it's it's been a it's been rewarding in a different way especially since you're molding the careers and the practices of so many young artists that are coming out through your doors and from what i understand bnu is quite the leader in terms of more technological um forms of art more modern contemporary forms of art isn't that correct it's a little bit different I, from I, the more traditional yes, no, roles because that will be an oversimplification because that has become a general perception that uh, uh, the it, it's not it's it's partially true and i'll tell you how it is i mean and and also about them we not molding them as such we providing them an environment uh, facilitating them because this uh, new generation is amazing the millennials are amazing their ideas yeah. are amazing and i think it's a it's a, it's an opportunity for to be able to learn i think i learned more from my 11 years old son uh, and 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 so so the program we designed uh, one thing i i mean uh, now that we're talking i must uh, you know um, uh, clarify here or share over here that it's a curriculum it's a curriculum structural model that allows it to be pro student so it's a very mm-hmm. student centric program so what we do is we provide students all the options and they have mm-hmm. the freedom to be able to make their choices and options as they go along at the various stages of the program so what happens that they whatever is coming out it's what this generation wants it's not that uh, we are dictating them that to be uh, you know in fact in our visual arts program most of the people are painters you know you name it risham sayed and mehboob shah uh, ayaz jokio uh, uh, and and then so so 
they come from painting background and they practicing painting but the students mm. uh, have the mind of Take their own and they have their own choices uh, but it's it's very diverse program and and people uh, are open to new ideas but not everybody is using technology not that there is anything wrong with using technology there are people uh, like uh, uh, muzammil who have come out from that program the people like shibli who have come out from this program and there is some some uh, really big names that you know already uh, people like uh, basir mehmood uh you know um ehsanul haq uh, sajad ahmed uh, mehrin murtaza uh, amber majid amber majid students. i mean there's lots lots of this exciting work and their practices are very very diverse they not they cannot be simply labeled as new media art or simply labeled as work relying on technology per se these are people who are relying on very strong ideas and mm. and and i i think that's the strength of their work that's really impressive and rashid i wanted to ask you a little bit about the third part of um your artistic larger practice which is of that as a curator i'd love to hear a little bit about your thoughts about that i mean what i found particularly interesting is that um well i know that one of your shows a recent one present elsewhere again it was quite forward thinking in that didn't you ask practitioners to share hypothetical suggestions for an exhibition or oh, for work sorry in a hypothetical exhibition that you were curating and that seems to be what everybody is doing now as well in this age of this lockdown a lot of digital exhibitions are going up a hypothetical exhibition so i'd love to hear about how you thought about this so many years ago far ahead of the curve and how you felt that it would be appealing i think the 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 desire to be uh, uh, to be a curator or something to that effect uh, people who put things together i think they enjoy uh, and i'm not talking about just my about myself think- thank you so much for listening in on my conversation with rashid rana rashid really is a phenomenal artist and a great personality and it was a pleasure to interview him unfortunately part of the conversation was lost because of technical problems but rashid and i went to speak about many things we talked about his own curatorial ventures which include present elsewhere a very forward thinking exhibition where he invited artists and other personalities to create works for an online exhibition we also spoke about his retrospectives one of which was at mohatta palace in karachi and the other of which was held in paris at the musee guime both really cool large scale shows we also spoke about some of the other projects that he's been involved with such as the wayne mcgregor collaboration and what his projects are moving forward it really was a pleasure to interview rashid and thank you so much for listening to us bye bye